So let's talk about the render settings. Those are these things right here. If you want to use a preset, click on this little triangle here, pick a preset, go nuts. Best settings is going to give you the best stuff, and, uh, you know, from there, it's just a bunch of wackiness. But let's get into it really deep and see what's up. When you click on the word, it's going to pop open this screen here. So it's going to ask you a lot of questions, pretty much. So what do you want the quality to be? Best, draft, wireframe. Wireframe is not going to show you any detail of what's going on. Best is going to uh, show you exactly what you saw when you view it 100%. And draft is going to be just like that. I mean, just like a sketch draft. Not like it'll look sketchy, but, you know, it'll be pixelated and stuff. Resolution means what resolution are you going to be outputting at? See, when I have it at full, it's... 1920 by 1080. That's full 1080p. If I say half, the actual size it'll export is going to be 960 by 540. Cuts them in half. Again, you can go down to third and quarter, and you can even do a custom if you want. But uh, I would say, in general, you know, go at full. I always go at full because I have a lot of space. Disk cache, uh, that's some technical stuff, and... You know, I only have read-only as an option. You can use OpenGL if that's something that you've got available and you think that's going to really help you out. Uh, that is going to start using your graphics card a bit heavier. Um, if you've got the card for it and you got the drivers in there, fire it up if you think that's a good idea. Um, proxy use. If you're using proxies in your comp, which means you're using less detailed files to fill in the space of higher files. So if you're working with, say, 4K footage, you can bring in a 720p sort of stand-in, who's not as attractive, but you get to work with it in your environment, and then when you export it, then, you, then you're bumping it back up to 4K. So it's saving you RAM when you're working, and then it uses it when you're exporting it, and you don't have to make changes. So uh, use no proxies, use them all, use just the ones in this comp, whatever. Uh, if you have proxies, use them all, because you want to make sure those are on. Uh, effects, all on, all off. You want to keep this at current settings, because if you've turned some on and some off, then it's going to be a mess. Uh, solo switches, same difference. Uh, those are on your layers. You can solo and unsolo things. So this just means when it says current settings, what you see is what you get. Okay. Guide layers, usually all off because you're just using those guides. Color depth. Here's something cool. If you work in 8 bits and some of your effects are 32 bit native effects, so that means they look best in 32, crank this up to 32 and enjoy. But you can work in 8 bits and then just export in 32. It's going to make a bigger file, but it's going to look nice. Trust me, it's going to look nice. Time sampling, uh, your frame blending, that's something you put on your layers. Uh, field rendering, this is if you're working with upper and lower fields of interlaced footage. I don't, so off. Uh, motion blur, again, current settings or unchecked layers is important. Um, if it's off for all layers, you get no motion blur, and then it won't be what you saw when you were rendering it back. Uh, time span here is length of comp or work area or custom. Your work area is that gray bar at the top of the at the top of the thing. So here, let's look at that. Here's the work area. This thing up here. Shorten it, lengthen it, whatever. So when you're when you're rendering things, uh, do you want it to just be the work area or do you want it to be the full length of the comp, you know? Or you can use a custom number with that thing over there. Uh, with the frame rate, you can use a frame rate, or if you are moving into an editing program and you know the frame rate of that, you can put it in. Um, in general, though, you want to have worked in the frame rate that you're going to be exporting, so it's all about setting it up beforehand. But that's, in general, what these render settings mean and what they're going to do to you later. Basically, render settings is what am I going into the render with? What do I want to bring with me you know, to the render party where they're going to do things to it. Like, uh, it's kind of like you're going to the blacksmith and you want to bring in, you know, the best iron to smelt and the best gems to to make the greatest, you know, enchanted broadsword or whatever the hell you're making. No, it's a stupid example. You're just bringing the best things in here or the most appropriate things in here so that then it can go into your output module. So the render settings are like the first layer of harming your video. Think about it that way, maybe. This is the first layer of harming your video to make it look worse than it is. Uh, and so you want to get these right before you move on. 
hopefully that answers any questions you have about render settings. Um, when people ask me what are the best render settings, well, you know, that's pretty easy. It's right here. It's called best settings. Those are the best ones. Use them. Um, but most appropriate render settings. Always remember, it's not best. What is the best render settings is subjective. You want to use the most appropriate render settings. Just like you know, when I say, am I going to go out dressed the best today? Well, maybe wearing a tuxedo to the beach is, I mean, I look like a classy bastard, but, you know, it's not what I want to wear. I want to wear some, some kind of casual attire, you know. So you want to dress appropriately. You want to render appropriately. Use the appropriate settings. But, you know, when I want to bring my A-game to the party, I'm wearing my best settings. You know, that is the bow tie tuxedo James Bond nonsense right there. So, best settings. Use them. And if you want to really get in there, if something's not working out for you, start here, and then go to the output module. So, hopefully that answers your questions. Check out the other uh, videos in this series about the render queue and the render settings and the output module. If you've just come here from the render queue tutorial, move on to the output module, because you're two out of the three all the way there. You're going to master this stuff. You're on a roll. I'm Evan Abrams. Thanks for watching, and check out those other videos.